Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba' Related to the Naqid We spoke about before About those people who make Fun of the religion of Islam Which was the Sixth Naqid min nawaqid Islam Where Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab said Rahimahullah ta'ala As saddest Man istahza bi shayin min dini rasooli Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam O thawab illahi O iqabihi kafir Wa dalil qawluhu ta'ala Kul abillahi wa ayatihi wa rasooli Kuntum tum stahziyun La ta'tadru kad kafir tu Bada imanikum So this was the Sixth Um Naqid min nawaqid al-Islam With Shaykh Muhammad ibn al Wahhab He said whoever ridicules something from the religion Of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Or the uh, rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ta'ala You know the, the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us The rewards, the things, the promises of Jannah etc Or iqabihi or the punishments has disbelieved and he said, and the evidence for this is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, uh, say, is it Allah in his signs or his verses and his messenger uh, that you were ridiculing? Make no excuse, you have disbelieved after you have uh, had Iman. And related to this is some very beneficial speech. Uh, from Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Baz Rahimahullah Ta'ala Where he said Some of the, the beneficial things These are questions related to this issue So I wanted to spend a little bit of time As quick as we can uh, On this On some of these masail That have to do with this uh, Nullifier of the Islamic faith Qala uh, The Sheikh was asked Su'ila an sub Abi Bakr wa Umar. So he was asked about the person who curses or who who uh, speaks ill or curses Abu Bakr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Fa'ajaba and he said Al-Aqrab indi kufrihi li'anna allaha tarda anhuma. He said what I think is most correct is that this person has become a disbeliever because they have because Allah is pleased with them, meaning Abu Bakr and Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Waqal Lianhu La Yusub Yusubba Siddiqa wal Umara wa Yabhadahum min men fi kalbihi hard uh habbatin kharda min iman fima na'taqid. He said and this is because related to the same issue he said, this is because that a person with even the smallest amount, like a, a seed of iman, that they would never uh, curse a Siddiq or Umar and Umar and have hatred for them, even the, uh, even a even the little bit, even the tiniest bit. This shows that they have no iman, and this is what we believe. Wusu'ila sub sahaba kufr. So someone asked him, "Is cursing the companions? Is this disbelief?" And he said, "Ida sabbahum amumin kafra in the jamil ahl al ilm, l'anna ma'nahu intiqadhum wa annahum leesa bi ahlin l'anna yahmal anhum al ilm." He said. In answer to the person who said, "If uh, a person curses the companions, are they are they uh, disbelievers?" He said, "If they curse them in general, uh, then this to all of the scholars in Islam that they have uh, disbelieved. They have disbelieved uh, in accordance to the consensus of the of the scholars of Islam, and this is because." This means that they have belittled those people who carried the religion and who knowledge is taken from. They have belittled the people who uh, 
the knowledge was transmitted, meaning the Islamic knowledge. وَقَالَ سَعَيْلْ Then the person asks, وَبَعْضُهُمْ And some of them, فَأَجَابَ هَذَا فِيهِ تَفْصِيلٍ الفرض والفردين فسق. So the Shaykh said, uh, the, the person asked, well, what about some of them? Some of the Sahaba, meaning, رضي الله تعالى عنهم. He said, regarding this, there's some details. He said, if it, if it is an individual or two individuals from the Sahaba, then this is a fisk. This is a wicked sin. وقال, أجمع العلماء على أن من طعن فيهم Kafir. The scholars have consensus about the one who uh, uh, slanders the companions that they're disbelievers. The one who does this is a disbeliever. Men sabbahum for whom a kafir ulta'an fihim li'anna ma'nahu taqdeeb al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul hum khayr nas. So, then he went on to say, Rahimallah Ta'ala, whoever uh, speaks ill of them, then he is a disbeliever, or curses them, uh, or, or um, speaks ill in regard to them, or curses them, then this means they have lied, or they have accused the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of lying. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that they are the best of nas. Khayr nas qarni thumma ladina yununuhum thumma ladina yununuhum. As the Prophet sallallahu said, the best is those people of my generation. So if someone uh, speaks ill about them, you know, curses them or speaks ill about them, amma sub wahid o ithnain fahad fisk kama yusubuna mu'awiyah o yusububu ba'dhum aliyan fiskun. So he said, as for cursing one of them, or some, uh, a couple of them, then this is a, a wicked sin. Uh, similar to some, the way some of the people curse or speak ill of Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, or speak ill, or some of them speak ill of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhum, like the Khawarij. Lakin sabbu sahabata fi jumlatin في جملة هذا ردة عن الإسلام أو بعضهم ردة. He said, however, speaking about the companions in general, you know, cursing the companions in general, or some of them, meaning more than just one or two, then this is uh, nullifying someone's faith in Islam. This is apostasy. وقال في موضوع آخر, and in another uh, book or another tape. It was related that uh, or Bin Baz said, Walakin either subba akthar o fasakahum yurtid le enhum hamala to shar either subbahum ma'nahu kadh fi shar. So that Bin Baz Rahimallah Ta'ala said, however, if someone curses most of them, most of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, or accuses most of them of sinfulness or evil, then they have this person who has done this has apostated. And this is because they were the ones, meaning the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, who carried this religion. So if you curse them or speak ill of them, you're questioning and uh, making, uh, speaking ill or vilifying the shara meaning the Sharia, that you're speaking ill about the Sharia because the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een were the ones who carried the Sharia. They're the, the ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored with this ni'mah and trusted with this ni'mah and who were the people of thiqat, the people of trustworthiness and just and uh, were the best of this nation and the best of all the nations after the Anbiya radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een وَعَلَيْهِمْ أَفْضَلْ صَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ With regarding the haqq of the Anbiya, عَلَيْهِمْ أَفْضَلْ صَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ So, the Sahaba, they were the, uh, they're the best of this nation. So when a person calls into question their uh, trustworthiness, or their um, righteousness, or their ability, or their knowledge, 
to transmit the religion of Islam, then they are in fact questioning Islam in totality. And we'll come across these statements from Bin Baz uh, very shortly. وقال, and then he said, Rahimallah Ta'ala, Man sabba sahabata kafir, wa man abghadahum kafir, li'annahum naqal, uh, naqlatu ad-deen. Lakin, man sabba wahid minhum wa ithnayn fahadha yufsuq, mithla sabba mu'awiyah wa aishata hadha fisq. Amma sabba sahabata ala, ala, umum, ala umumi fahuwa kufrun, wa riddatun an al-islam li'annahu idha سَبَّهُمْ فَمَعْنَاهُ أَنَّهُمْ لَيْسُوا بِعُدُورُ وَأَنَّ مَا نَقَلُوهُ مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ لَا سِحَّةَ لَهُ This is a very important statement. This is what I was just mentioning. Shaykh Abdulaziz bin Baz, rahimahullah ta'ala said, Whoever curses the companions has disbelieved. And whoever hates them has disbelieved. And this is because they were the one who transmitted this religion. And whoever, however, whoever curses one from amongst them or two from amongst them, then this is a, a wicked sin, a major sin, uh, similar to the way the people, some people curse Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu or Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And this is fisk, this is a wickedness. As for cursing the companions in general, then this is disbelief, uh, taking a person out of the fold of Islam, meaning they are apostate. This is because cursing them means that, that they were not trustworthy and that they were, and, and they were the ones who carried uh, the religion of Islam and that Islam therefore uh, would not be uh, sound or correct or auth auth authentic. Then a person asked Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Baz, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, وَيَتَّهِمُوا عَيْشَةَ وَهِيَ عِرْضُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَأَجَابَ مَنْ اَهْتَهِمُ مَنْ مَنْ اهتهمها بزنا كفر لأنه مكذب لله فالله أبرأها. So Bin Baz was asked, رحمة الله تعالى, the people who accuse Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنه, and she was, uh, you know, really this is was the honor. Of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he 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 loved Aisha. This was his wife, so this is related to the haq of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, Bin Baz rahimahullah taala said, "Whoever accuses Aisha uh, of zina has disbelieved. This is because they are lying or accusing Allah of lying, because Allah subhanahu wa taala in the Quran." Uh, freed her from these false, wicked, evil accusations. وَقَالَ فِي مَوْضُوَ الْآخِرَ And he said in another place, فَمَنْ أَنْكَرَ صُحْبَتُهُمْ وَأَنَّهُمْ لَيْسُ بِمُسْلِمِينَ وَأَنَّهُمْ اِرْتَدُّوا فَظَاهِرَ كُفْرِهِمْ لَأَنَّهُمْ جَعَلُوا أَصْحَابَ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كافرين وجعلوا حملة الإسلام كفارا ومعنى هذا إبطال الإسلام وإبطال الدين بكلية. so he sh he said رحمه الله تعالى he said whoever denies the companionship that I mean that they were companions of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and that they or and says that they were not uh, Muslims. And that they apostated from the religion, then it is apparent that these people have uh, uh, apostated. They are disbelievers, and this is because they have made the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam disbelievers, and have made those ones who carried Islam, who who uh, who protected Islam, disbelievers, and this would mean that the Islam would be batil, would be false, and the religion in, in, in its entirety would be false, because the, the people who carried it were false. إِذَا كَانَ حَمْلَةُهُ كُفَّارًا مُرْتَدِّينَ 
وَإِشْ بَاقِي لِنَا He said, if the people who carried and protected this religion were disbelievers, apostates, then what's left for us? وَعَلَى رَاسِهِمْ الصَّدِّيقِ And he said, first and foremost, a Siddiq, meaning Abu Bakr. وَعُمَرْ وَعُثْمَانْ وَطَلْحَ وَزُبَيْرْ وَسَعِيدِ بِنْ زَيْدْ وَسَعَدْ بِنْ أَبِي وَقَاسْ وَأَشَبَّهُمْ فَمَنْ يَبْقَى He said, and he mentioned all of those companions we just mentioned, رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين Then what would be left for us if you're saying all of those people have apostate? أَمَّا إِذَا سَبَّ مَعَاوِيَةَ وَسَبَّ عَائِشَةَ فَهَذَا فِسْقٌ وَظُلْمٌ وَكُفْرٌ فَإِنَّ اتَّقِدُوا عَدَمَ بَرَاءَتِهَا وَأَنَّهَا مُتَهْمَتُ صَارَ كُفْرٍ أَكْبَرْ لَأَنَّهُ تَقْذِيبٍ لِلَّهِ So this is a very important uh, detail the Shaykh mentioned, رحمه الله تعالى. He said, as for the one who curses or speaks ill of Muawiyah and Aisha, then this is a, a wicked sin as we mentioned. And this is oppression. And this is kufr. And obviously the Shaykh, this is my statement, he is not meaning that they are, uh, that these are the major vulm or the major fisk and the major kufr because those things, if it's major, it takes you out of the fold of Islam. As the ulama mentioned, they divide these categories, fisk, uh, vulm, and kufr into two categories. So meaning that there's the f- major fisk and the minor fisk. The major dhulm and the minor dhulm. And the major uh, kufr and the minor kufr. And take this as a principle that the one who does the major ones of those sins, the major dhulm, the major fisk, the major kufr, is outside of the fold of Islam. Those are the major ones which take you out of the fold of Islam. The minor ones are major sins which are wicked. And so the shaykh here is talking about the people who have uh, spoken ill about Aisha and Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhuma that they uh, have fallen into the major wicked sin and the major oppression and, the, uh, and I'm sorry that they have done a wicked sin and they have oppressed them and that they have fallen into the minor disbelief which does not take them out of the fold of Islam then he says the in taqidu so if they believe that she was not freed from those, that, those accusations of zina, and that she, then this person who continues to hold this belief, that they have done the major uh, disbelief. They have fallen. They've fallen into apostasy because they have. They have. Uh, this is because they have um, basically. Um, Denied what Allah has said in the Quran, so it's it's as if they are making they're making takdeeb of Allah, meaning that they are uh, basically accusing Allah of lying because they don't believe in the Quran. The Quran has made bara'a of her, has freed her from those accusations of zina, but yet they hold this belief as we know the general belief of. Uh, the extreme Shia sects, not all the Shia, there are some Shia like the Zaydiyya who don't believe this. They have some bid'ah, but they are still Muslim. But however, the Rafida, the Ithna Ashariya, the Imamiya, all of these groups which you see a lot in Iran and some in Pakistan, some of them in Yemen, in uh, Iraq as well. You see them all over the world. Unfortunately, we have this disease in America as well. We have this sickness in Canada as well. And we have this filthy um, uh, nudges belief also in the UK and Australia and all over the world because these evil, wicked sinners have migrated around the world and taken refuge in these lands and spread their filth as if it is like the flu or as if it's a type of, of sickness. When a person is vomiting, their vomit might uh, spill on the clothes of others and taint their aqidah as well. وَعِيَادَ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Then the Shaykh said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, another important mas'ala related to this, this naqid of Islam, he, a mas'ala, hukum julus mal mustahzi'in bid-deen. So now we've got, come to a new mas'ala which is very beneficial for us because a lot of times we don't get these masail unless we go to the books of the ulama. 
So here's a beautiful issue here, and this relates to the issue of sitting with the person who ridicules the religion of Islam. So the Shaykh said, Qala ibn Baz rahimahullah ta'ala, إِذَا جَلَسَ وَلَمْ يُنْكِرْ عَلَيْهِمْ وَسَقَتَ فَظَاهِرُهُ مُوَافَقَ So he said, رحمه الله تعالى, that a person who sits with a person who makes fun uh, uh, of Islam and does not uh, admonish them or correct them or, you know, say, hey, this is wrong, you know, doesn't admonish them and is quiet, then the... Then a, in the apparent ruling or what seems apparent is that they are in agreement with them wa illa wajibun ala man jalasa ma man yaqul al-batil wa yanqal al-haq wa yastahzi bil-haq an an la yajlis bal yaqul wa yafarq إذا لم يستطع الإنقار باللسان وإلا فلينقر وليبين خطأ من تكلم بالباطل وأما إذا جلس وسقط فمعناه موافقة ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. So the Sheikh said, رحمة الله تعالى. He said it's an obligation. Rather, it's an obligation that the person who sits with someone who says a statement of batal, so this can also apply to Ahl al-Bid'ah in general, even if it's not related to this issue of making fun of the religion. Uh, who, who, so a person who sits with a person who is speaking falsehood, it is an obligation to uh, uh, also... يَقُولُ بَاطِلُ وَيَنْكَرَ الْحَقِّ وَيَسْتَحْزِبِ الْحَقِّ So if they're sitting with a person who is saying a statement of falsehood, or they are denying the truth, or they are ridiculing the truth, then they should not sit with them. Rather, they should stand up and remove themselves from this gathering. And if they are not able to do so, then they should... Uh, they should speak against, speak out against them uh, with their, uh, make, make a statement speaking out against them. So they should, uh, they should speak against what they're saying, this falsehood, this denial of the truth, etc. Otherwise, they should, they should, uh, they should make clear their mistakes for the one who speaks uh, with falsehood. So they should deny their falsehood and they should refute their falsehood. As for if they sit and they're silent, then the meaning of this is that they're in agreement with them. And he says, and there is no might or power except Allah. He says, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Then he related the ayat, إِنَّكُمْ إِذَنْ مِثْلَهُمْ Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily you are like them. And then he says, ظَاهِرَ الْقُرْآنِ عَدَمَ الْعُذْرِ بَلْ إِمَّا أَنْ يَتَكَلَّمَ وَإِمَّا أَنْ يُقُومَ وَإِذَا أَنْكَرَ وَيُبَيِّنَ الْبَاطِلِ فَقَدْ أَدَى مَا عَلَيْهِ So then the shaykh said regarding this ayat where Allah says, Verily you are uh, like them. That he says, the apparent meaning of this uh, uh, of, in the Qur'an is that the person is not excused you know, for sitting with a person of, uh, of falsehood, who is speaking falsehood or making fun of the religion. Either this person, either you should speak out against it, or you should leave that gathering. And if you speak against it, and uh, refute the falsehood, then this person has done their obligation. They've fulfilled their wajib. Then he brought another issue here. 
which I thought was important, and this will be the last thing that we speak about related to this uh, naqid al Islam. He said, Mas'ala, وقال, and he said, وَقَدْ يُسُبُّ دِينَهُ وَقَدْ يَسْتَحْزِيُ بِدِينَهُ وَهُوَ يَقُولُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَلَا تَنْفَعْهُ هَذِهِ كَلِمَةٌ لِأَنَّهُ لَمْ يُؤْدِي حَقَّهَا لِأَنَّ مِنْ حَقَّهَا أَنْ تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَحْدَهُ وَأَنْ تَعْظِمُ وَأَنْ تَعْظِمَ حُرْمَاتُهُ وَأَنْ تَلْتَزِمَ بِحَقِّهِ وَأَنْ تُكَفَّرَ بِمَا يُعْبِدُ مِنْ دُونِهِ So Shaykh Abdulaziz bin Baz al-Imam rahimahullah ta'ala said related to another issue pertaining to this he said so therefore a person might um, cur- uh, not curse but he may speak ill or vilify his religion and perhaps he may even ridicule his religion and then he says la ilaha illallah this will not benefit benefit him this kalima the kalima to tawhid will not benefit him and this is because he did not he did not give the kalima to tawhid la ilaha illallah its rights because one of the rights of it is that a person worships Allah alone and that they they raise up and exalt those things which are sacred from 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 this kalima meaning Islam and that they practice it. They also practice the meaning of la ilaha illallah and, and exalting uh, Islam in the kalimat to tawheed And that they disbelieve in everything which is worship besides Allah. Then he said, Rahim Allah Ta'ala, فَإِذَا قُلْتَهَا فَإِذَا قُلْتَهَا وَأَنْتَ غَيْرَ Multazimi bihaqiha fa wujudiha ka adamiha fal maqsud anna hadhihi kalimata laha haquq fala bud min ada hadhihi al haquq so the sheikh said rahimallahu ta'ala so if you said even if you said the statement mean the statement of tawhid but you but you were not practicing it and not giving it its rights then the fact that you said the statement is the same as if you didn't say it because what is meant here or what is 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 must be present here is that a person says the statement of tawhid and they practice its rights they give it its rights that a person must practice islam you know they must practice the kalima to tawhid it's not sufficient, as we've mentioned in some of the other Nawaqid al-Islam and in some of our other lectures, that it's not sufficient just to say the statement of Tawheed and not practice it. Uh, La ilaha illallah, it has shurut. That you have knowledge of what you're saying. That you're truthful. That you have yaqeen. That you're certain about its meaning. And that you love what it entails. You love Allah. You love the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You love uh, Tawheed. And all the other shurut of la ilaha illallah. So you must practice that. It's not sufficient for a person to say la ilaha illallah. But then they do every kind of kufr. Every kind of thing that takes them out of the fold of Islam. Or they don't practice Islam at all. And they say, Iman is in my heart. You don't know my heart. That's not sufficient. And you will meet your Lord upon that. And that's, that's, that's a, a terrible way to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So make tawbah immediately if you're not practicing Islam. If you're, if you're saying la ilaha illallah, but you're not practicing the meanings, make tawbah from that. Qala Shaykh bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala Ba'd al-hakuk yaj'al sahibaha ka'annuhu lam, lam yakulha baqin fi kufrihi wa dhalalihi wa ba'd al-haquq yanqus ma'naha wa yudha'fu wa yudha'fu ma'naha lakin la yukun sahibaha kafirin so he said some of the rights of la ilaha illallah can make the by a person only practicing some of it 
it makes it as if the person has not said the, the statement ever, meaning said la ilaha illallah, because they have so much kufr, so much disbelief, and so much falsehood in their belief, belief or in their aqidah or etc. And some of the rights of la ilaha illallah uh, will just, by not, do, by not uh, actualizing those rights through practice, will just take away from its meaning and weaken a person's iman and faith and their tawheed. However, they'll st- they, it will not make them a disbeliever. So that's what's important is to know that some things take us out of the fold of Islam as we're, the reason we're studying this treaty is to know some of them. And some of the things just weaken our faith. So we have to be cautious. We have to know those things which take us out of the fold of Islam and those things which weaken our iman and our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever فَمَنْ قَالَهَا وَسَبَّ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ كَفْرَ بِذَلِكْ وَلَمْ يَنْفَعُهُ So whoever uh, curses Allah or speaks ill about Allah and His Messenger والسلام, has disbelieved. And it doesn't benefit them at all if they say the shahada. لَمْ يَنْفَعُهُ قَوْلْ لَا إِلَهِ اللَّهِ وَلَا صَلَاتُهُ وَلَا صَوْمُهُ وَلَا حُجَّ وَلَا حَجَّهُ وَلَا زَكَاتُهُ وَلَا زَكَاتُهُ إِلَّا غَيْرِ ذَلِكَ So their hajj, their fasting, uh, their zakat, none of it will benefit them if they have cursed Allah and His Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام لأنه جاء بن... لأنه جاء بناقذ بناقذ من نواقذ الإسلام as we mentioned before and this is because they have of fallen into one of the things which nullifies a person's Islam in totality by cursing Allah and cursing His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. أَمَّا الْحَالْ الثَّانِي As for the second uh, situation فَقَدْ يَقُولَهَا وَلَكِنْ لَا يَلْزَمَ لَا يَلْزَمْ بِحُقُوكِهَا وَمُكَامِلَاتِهَا فَهَذَا مَا أَدَى حَقَّهَا كَامِلٍ بَلْ أَدَى حَقَّهَا وَيَنْقُصْ فَيُقُونَ ضَعِيفَ الْإِمَانِ فَيُقُونَ مُسْتَحِقٍ لِلْعَقُوبَةِ وَيُقُونَ عَلَى الْخَطْرِ مِنْ دُخُولِ النَّارِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِذَا مَاتْ عَلَى ذَلِكَ So the Shaykh mentioned then the second situation or the second case is the person who says the statement of لا إله إلا الله the statement of Tawheed, the Miftah al-Jannah However, they don't give it its full rights. Not its full rights. Then this person has not given its full rights. Rather, they've only done some of their some of the rights of la ilaha illallah. So this has weakened their iman. It's, it shows that their iman is weak, and they are worthy of being punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are on a very dangerous path leading to the hellfire on the day of judgment if they die upon this weak iman of, of not giving la ilaha illallah its rights by doing the major sins or mentioning or some of the fisk that we mentioned uh, prior. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And anything I said correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.